listen, my friends, and hear the good news. Jesus now has come to save you. One with God, he came from heaven, came to save all people on earth. Listen, my friends, and hear the good news. Jesus Christ has come to bring hope. One with God, he came to save me, came to save me, came to save you. Good morning. Welcome to the Church of St. Paul and the Redeemer on Sunday, December 27th, 2020, as we celebrate the first Sunday in the season of Christmas. Whether you live near or far, whether you're a new visitor or a longtime member, we're so glad to worship with you today. And I hope you'll join us in living out our mission to mirror the radical hospitality practiced by Jesus. Our service this morning will follow daily morning prayer right to from the Book of Common Prayer of the Episcopal Church. You'll find everything you need to participate in the subtitles at the bottom of your screen. Most of all, welcome. 
And may God bless you as we find new ways to worship together even while we are geographically apart. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto us a child is born, a son is given. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Mother of us all, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Rest you merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. To save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From God our Heavenly Father a blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same, how that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, oh, tidings of comfort. Not then said the angel, let nothing you affright. This day is born a Savior of a pure virgin bright, to free all those who trust in him from Satan's power and might. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Now to the Lord sing praises, all you within this place, and with true love and charity each other now embrace. This holy tide of Christmas doth bring redeeming grace, oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, oh, tidings of comfort and joy. It is to honor God with praise. Alleluia. Alleluia. How good it is to sing praises to you, O God. How pleasant it is to honor you with praise. For you rebuild Jerusalem and gather the exiles of Israel. You heal the brokenhearted and bind up their wounds. You count the number of the stars and call them all by their names. How pleasant it is to honor God with praise. Hallelujah. Great are you and mighty in power. 
there is no limit to your wisdom. You lift up the lowly, but cast the wicked to the ground. We sing to you, most high, with thanksgiving. We make music to you upon the harp. For you cover the heavens with clouds and prepare rain for the earth. You make grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve humankind. How pleasant it is to honor God with praise. Hallelujah. You provide food for flocks and herds, and for the young ravens when they cry. You are not impressed by the might of a horse. You have no plea sure in human strength. But you have pleasure in those who fear you, in those who await your gracious favor. How pleasant it is to honor God with praise. Hallelujah. Worship God, O Jerusalem. Praise your sovereign, O Zion. For the Holy One has strengthened the bars of your gates and has blessed your children within you. Peace has been established on your borders. You are satisfied with the finest wheat. You send out your command to the earth, and your word runs very swiftly. How pleasant it is to honor God with praise. Hallelujah. You give snow like wool, and scatter hoar frost like ashes. You scatter your hair like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against your cold? You send forth your word and melt them. You blow with your wind and the waters flow. You declare your word to Jacob, your statutes and your judgments to Israel. You have not done so to any other nation. To them you have not revealed your judgments. Alleluia. How pleasant it is to honor God with praise. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. How pleasant it is to honor God with praise. Hallelujah. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. 
And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nation shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the prophets. But over you the Lord will arise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open, by day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation, and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came to be a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me 
ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Holy and Undivided Trinity, one God. Amen. In the beginning, and with those three simple words, John has brought the entire Christian narrative back to the beginning of this great testimonial of God's interaction with human beings here on earth. It is a moment of pure literary genius. It is an astounding theological statement that the Son was with the Father from that very beginning, and that all things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, 
and the life was the light of the people. Jesus, the Son, was there in the beginning, and, beloved, he has never left us, ascended to heaven as it may be, but present, especially when we gather, even over the Internet. Our scaled-back, slimmed-down, or digitized Christmas is not the worst some people have had to endure. And I'm not just saying here, I'm not saying that this year and this Christmas hasn't had a pall cast over it. However, as I have said before, God breaking through to intersect with our lives is not just Moses' stuff. It's not just Jesus' stuff, but the entirety of God's ancient and enduring love affair with human life. And scaled back or minimized or skipped for this year, Christmas has come. God has come into our world to j stay just where God has always been here for us now as God was with Moses God is with us through Jesus Christ our Savior in other words beloved we err if we think as the storyline may suggest that everything was going along fine in a biblical kind of way and we all have all this recorded history of various interactions between God and prophets and God giving favor and blessing to the Hebrew people. And then suddenly, Jesus pops up. Not so, says John. In the beginning, John replies, he was there from the very start of it all. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. Do we ever think about the possibility that Jesus may still take make occasion to walk among us? That we even may have interacted with him without knowing, like the disciples on the road to Emmaus? What kind of followers will he find us to be? Still standing is one answer that comes to my mind when I think back on this year. Sometimes it can seem very quiet for a very long time from God's end of the connection. Do we ever think about that? It's hard to believe your ears when you are struggling with something and the gentle voice keeps saying, Wait, be patient. Be patient, as patient as I have been for you. Oh, that's hard to bear. I wonder if at those times when I say to myself, God's not here, in reality it is I who have wandered off on my own. I who have stopped seeing and stopped listening. In the beginning was the Word, and at the end will be the Word. And all along the way, from one point to the next, and so on, Christ is there, born quietly in the dark night near the shepherd's field. Our God becomes human, true light, which enlightens everyone, has come into the world. And that light, that true, true light, has been passed along to us to shine in the world that unfolds before us. We celebrate Jesus' birth every year as a reenactment and as a way of remembering the story and the promise of becoming children of God ourselves, siblings with Jesus himself, and join with him 
when our days in this finite world come to an end. It is then that we will join Jesus. And where will Jesus be? The Gospel of John gives us that answer in clear and direct language. He is right where we say he is. He is the only Son who is close to the Father's heart. Wherever would we find a warmer, safer, more peaceful place of enchantment than right next to the heart of God? Think about it, beloved. In the end, we will be with Jesus. Locked in that eternal embrace of love just like it has always been. From the very beginning. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Creator God, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there may be justice and peace on the earth. We give thanks for Leslie, Jerome, Esther, Sarah, David, Ross, Peggy, and Ruth as they begin another year, and for Linda and Ron, Jonathan and Daniela, and Charlie and Kim as they celebrate their anniversaries. Give them grace to do your will in all that they undertake that their works may find favor in your sight. We pray for Elise, Becky, Sandy, Jen, Joe, Errol, Virginia, Jacqueline, Van, Lonnie, Chloe, Deborah, Charles, Pauline, Bill, Carol, James, Marion, Joseph, Sally and her family, Rock, William, Cheryl, Henry, Sophie, Naomi, George, Sean, Tim, William, Jewel, Beatrice, Bronwyn, Chris, and Barbara, as well as their caregivers. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble that, there may be, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. We remember especially Jack, Alice, and Albert. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I invite your intercessions and thanksgivings, either silently or aloud. Almighty God, 
You have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill us with his joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Mother of us all, be among us and remain with us always. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.